Okay, so we've established that everything's imported correctly and that everything's working. Um, so we can get right into it. I think that's probably the best way to learn how everything works. Uh, there will be some more videos later on which explain all the different components in detail, but without a context of how it all fits together, I don't think the details are very useful. So we'll just start by setting up a um, blank scene and adding in all the prerequisites and making Kinteractive actually do something. And hopefully that'll give you a pretty good idea of how it all fits together. So we'll start a blank scene, new scene. Um, don't want to save whatever we've got open. And we basically just have to start adding all of the various components and then we'll get them connected together. So all the important stuff is going to be under the Kinteractive subfolder and it's all in fairly well organized subfolders. Most of the components that we're going to be using are under the scripts folder and the prerequisites obviously we need. So let's add them to the scene. We'll create a uh, empty game object to use as a holder for the Kinteractive Manager component. We'll just call that Kinteractive Manager. Drag and drop that on. Um, you can also hit the Add Component button if you find that easier, and it's all under the Kinteractive um, section. There we go. So as we can see, we've got quite a lot of fields that need to be filled out. So we're going to go through and make each one of these transforms and animators, and then we're going to join them all to the Kinteractive Manager. Um, this is all actually documented step by step in the manual, but um, it can be easy to watch how it's done rather than read how it's done, so take your pick. Okay, so then obviously we need a um, we need some hands basically, or a player. So let's put in a um, player folder, and under the player folder we'll make another subfolder um, to hold the model and then you can use this SWAT model T because it's in the T pose this is just from Mixamo it's a free model uh, you can of course use any you want and the first thing we need to do is unpack the prefab because it's it doesn't come the way we want it to and we'll remove the animator so the next bit we'll do is actually add the animator to the model folder rather than on the model. Pop an animator on there and then choose the animator controller that comes with Kinteractive. And then we also need to add the SWAT model T avatar so that way it knows which bones to control. So we also need to add the inverse kinematic script so that the animator can control the hands and that's just under prerequisite IK control and it just it just has to be on the same game object as the animator so it, it, it'll grab whatever the first animator is on the game object. The next step is to add an audio source component so I'll create a separate game object for that and this audio source is used by the Kinteractive Manager for things like button clicks and the squeaky sounds of levers and switches um, so and what actually ends up happening is that whatever switch or control you end up looking at the audio source is automatically moved to the location of that button or switch and that way the click sound comes out of the switch you're looking at so we need to set the spatial blend to 3D and we don't want to play on awake. So the next bit we need is to add a bunch of transforms and they're just blank transforms but they'll help our hands move around and it actually helps us as well to see where the hands will end up um, in the scene rather than just trying to guess. So if I call the first one left hand rest position duplicate that and call it right hand rest position. 
duplicate again, and we'll call it right hand IK helper. Duplicate again, we'll call it left hand IK helper. The next step is to create the UI. We need a few UI components because Kineractive will display some instructions for the player every time they look at a button. Uh, we'll just call this folder UI. Uh, under that, let's put in a raw image. And we can put the event system under there too. And we'll call the raw image crosshair. We'll assign it a crosshair texture. There's one that comes with Kineractive called cross striped. And we'll make it red so it's nice and easy to see. And we don't want to raycast the target. So next we want to add a regular image and we'll call that text background image and we'll change the color to something dark, maybe a little bit transparent, don't want raycast target. So we want it to be a fair bit wider and we want it to be a fair bit lower. So that way it's not blocking our crosshair. And we can even make it a bit thinner actually. That looks pretty good. And next we want to add a raw UI image. And this will be for displaying our control icon. So I'll assign just a temporary one now, maybe this D-pad. Um, let's call this controls icon. It's a little big, so we'll shrink it. And we want it displayed on the left side, so well, let's set the anchor and pivot to left. And maybe we'll give it a bit of a padding, say 10, that looks a bit better. And next we add the text that will actually pop up with the instructions. Let's call this instructions text. Let's make it a uh, more readable, so I'll increase the size, make it bold, change the color to a nice bright color, and we want it displayed centered on both. And we don't want to raycast the target either. And actually, we don't want to raycast the target on this one, so I'll take that off. Okay, and the Okay, and the last step is to move the camera into an appropriate position because it's a first person game. So we obviously want the camera to be roughly where our character's head is. So we'll call this a camera holder and we'll place the camera in there. We'll reset the position and then we'll move our camera to roughly about head height. This will probably change. Actually, there's one more thing we have to do, because if we would hit play now, all we would see is the player's face from the inside out, which we don't really want. So let's go into the model, and we can do a search for head. And what we can do is make the scale 0, 0, 0, so that way. Effectively, we have no head, so that way it doesn't get in the way. And that way the camera... If we rotate the camera... Oh, we're still a little bit low. Let's go up a bit and maybe back a bit. There we go, that's pretty good. The other thing we want to do is change the clipping planes to as low as it goes. There we go. So now we can go into the Kineractive Manager and start filling out all of the empty fields here. The way Kineractive works is that it shoots out raycasts from somewhere. And that's how it knows whether objects are going to be interactive or not. So what we'll do is we'll make it so that our camera is the origin of the ray so that being a first person game when we look around wherever we put the crosshair 
we'll know that the ray is being shot right in the middle of it. So wherever we look with the crosshair, we'll know that we can interact with the object we're looking at. And the ray distance is, you want it to be roughly arm's length, unless you're doing like a magic game where you have telekinesis or something. And 10 checks per second, that's how many times the ray cast will shoot out of the camera. So 10's pretty good, it feel, feels quite responsive without um, shooting too many rays, which you don't want to usually do. Um, the layer mask, we'll just make that everything for now. If you have a very complicated scene, then you probably want to filter that to only certain objects because you don't want it to be interacting with every single collider it comes across. And here we put in the empty transforms for our left hand and right hand. And the rest positions as well. The, sp the default speed settings are pretty good. You can play with them to move the hands at various speeds, depending on how fast you want your character to move. The hand animator is the one we created on the model. So I'll drag that in. And that grabs the animator from that game object. The player atoms file, it's a bit like a filter. And I'll explain that later on in a different video. And that basically filters out which animations Kineractive is going to use, if any. You don't have to use any, depending on the game you're using. But if it's a first person game, you probably want the fingers to be animated. So I have added some animations and we'll just use the default atoms that comes with Kineractive. So the interaction text, that'll be the text component we made. The text background is that one there. The controls icon is this one here. And the crosshair, obviously, is that there. Pop that one in. Crosshair scale is how big you want your crosshair to, to be. Depending on your artwork, you can scale that. Uh, we'll just leave it at default for now. The audio source is the audio source we made earlier. Pop that in. And the player inputs file. That's essentially a filter for what um, player inputs we can use. So that way we don't get bombarded with everything that's in the Unity input manager. See, there's quite a number of inputs here. We don't want to use all of them. So we can use the player inputs file to filter out only the ones we want and I'll make a video separately for that too but we'll just use the default one that um, comes with Kineractive. Feet, we do, we're not going to be using any foot IK in the example so we'll just leave those blank. So now that everything's filled out let's press play and see how things look. Okay so our character looks pretty funny without a head and the arms have gone somewhere strange and believe it or not that's what we want to do because it means that the inverse kinematic script is actually controlling the arms and it's making them go to wherever these rest positions are. So if I grab this rest position transform and I start moving it about we can see that it's actually making the hands move about so the hands will just follow and rotate to whatever this transform is doing and that's really just how Kineractive works it moves these two transforms around and we can do that for the second hand too put it in a different spot okay so there we are um, we've completed our prerequisites and everything's working as it should so what we did is uh, essentially make the UI elements we added our player model to the scene and added an audio source, a few empty transforms, and then we just placed all of these prerequisite game objects and components into the matching fields of the Kineractive Manager component. So once you've got it set up, you never really have to come back to this again, and you can reuse it as many times as you like.